By now, you know lots about Nanaimo from watching this channel, right? But have you ever heard of a place called Campbell River and wondered how it compares? Stay tuned and I'll show you. Thanks for tuning in to another one of my videos. My name is Rita and I help people relocate to Vancouver Island just like I did. My hope for this channel is to help you make an informed decision about your move here. And if that sounds like it might help you, make sure you subscribe. You can even book a call with me at a time that works for you using the link in the description of this video. So knowing from experience, I know that location can be one of the trickier parts of the equation when you're thinking of relocating to Vancouver Island. I for one came when the market was very hot and finding a house was a matter of timing and luck. So when we were exploring the island and a place called Campbell River came up in our search, we had no idea what it was like. Hopefully I'll answer some of the questions you might have about this area right now. Campbell River is located on the East Coast, midway up Vancouver Island, 155 kilometers north of Nanaimo. The drive from Nanaimo takes about an hour and a half along Highway 19, passing the Comox Valley on your way. And you can learn more about that area in this video. Campbell River was first incorporated into a city in 2005, but its history dates way back to 1792 when Vancouver Island was first charted. In 1860, many Europeans began settling in the area to set up logging camps. And between 1952 and 2010, it also had its own paper mill called Elk Falls Pulp and Paper Mill. But Campbell River is most famous for fishing and hunting and is known worldwide as the salmon capital of the world. In 1924, it became home to the Taiyi Club, which is Campbell River's oldest organization and the world's most exclusive fishing club due to its strict set of fishing rules to earn a membership. Campbell River's population is around 35,000 people with a population density of 225.7 people per square kilometer. Now this is compared to Nanaimo's estimated 2024 population of around 108,000 people. Density wise, Nanaimo's is much higher at 1,147 people per square kilometer. So Campbell River's smaller size offers tranquility while Nanaimo's urban setting provides a more dynamic lifestyle. Both cities have a median age of between 44 and 46, but with more and more young families finding their way to Vancouver Island, I expect this to change in the coming years. After talking about population, it'll come as no surprise that if you're looking for a wider array of shopping options, then Nanaimo is your best bet. It's got the largest shopping mall on Vancouver Island, Woodgrove Center, and other popular chains, and a Costco. Campbell River does have some larger big box stores, such as Canadian Tire. However, you're better off checking out the shops along Shoppers Row along the waterfront. And as for sports and recreation, both cities offer many community and rec centers to enjoy various activities such as swimming, skating, and local events. One thing I must point out, and I hate to admit, but Nanaimo is not known for having the best healthcare system. The hospital here is 60 years old, and with only 340 beds, the city has a huge need for a new hospital with a larger capacity. Campbell Rivers campus of the North Island Hospital opened in 2017. It has a 95 bed capacity, and citizens seem to be quite happy with this addition to the city. If you're house hunting in Campbell River, you'll be pleased to hear that purchasing a home there is more affordable than in Nanaimo. Over the last 90 days, compared to Nanaimo's median sale price of a three bedroom home of $695,000, that median sale price is only $640,000 in Campbell River. And considering you can find lots of homes with breathtaking ocean views at a higher price point, mind you, it's definitely worth checking the city out if it'll save you some money. Now let's talk about property taxes. By now, you know that Nanaimo's property taxes are quite high. In 2023, the final property tax rate for Nanaimo was 0.583635%. In 2023, Campbell River's property tax rate was 0.558%. 529%. So for a $650,000 home in Nanaimo, your property taxes will cost you $3,794. In Campbell River, they aren't much lower, but they are 
$130. Considering what your property taxes are being used for, which are things like municipal services, community development, and public infrastructure, it's important to factor in what you're getting back from your city. And in my opinion, Nanaimo just has more to offer. If you're moving to Vancouver Island, then I'm sure that outdoor recreation is something that you value as much as I do. In Nanaimo, you're centrally located, making it an easy starting point to travel and experience all that the island has to offer in terms of hiking, fishing, camping, and beaches. And while Campbell River is a little further up island from the busier areas around Nanaimo, you can still access so many wonderful Vancouver Island outdoor destinations that you may not feel the need to venture far very often. Strathcona Provincial Park is located 48 kilometers west of Campbell River and is BC's oldest and largest provincial park. From camping at Buttle Lake, visiting one of its many waterfalls, and even grizzly bear sightseeing tours, it's the perfect destination if you love nature. Another must see is a visit to Elk Falls Provincial Park, which is a mere three kilometers north of Campbell River. Most people get to Campbell River via Nanaimo and take the drive north. There aren't many other options, but if you don't have a car, you can hop onto the Island Link shuttle bus as far down as Victoria up to your destination. And by air, you can travel from Vancouver or Washington to the Campbell River Airport via Pacific Coastal and Central Mountain Air. Travel was one of the main reasons we decided to plant our roots in Nanaimo, as Campbell River just felt a little too out of reach and inconvenient for our family. If that doesn't bother you and you like the idea of a more remote location, then Campbell River could be the place for you. Weather. I won't spend a ton of time on this topic, as both locations are are very similar in terms of weather. But if you are curious about what weather is like month to month here, I did do an entire video on this topic. However, it is important to note that the higher up island you go, the slightly colder it is in the winter with more snow. And it's a couple degrees warmer in the summer as well. And of course, your chances of rainy days increases as you head north up Vancouver Island. But Campbell River experiences about the same levels of rain as Nanaimo does. I hope this video has helped you answer some of your questions surrounding Vancouver Island and which areas might suit your needs most. And if it has and you're feeling generous, please like this video and show me some more love by subscribing to my channel. Thanks again for being here and learning a little bit more about this beautiful island I call home, and I'll see you next time.